The work site is over 200 miles in space. Our mission, install new station hardware, giant solar array wings, adding more power, setting the stage for expansion of the International Space Station. The crew is ready, having trained for any last minute changes to the mission. A mission that builds on experiences of the past and leads us to the journeys of tomorrow. Several of the crew members who will be adding the massive solar arrays to the station are veterans of past station assembly missions. Commander Rick Sturko's first mission was also the first space station assembly flight. At that time, the station had a different look. Two modules, Zarya and Unity, with no living quarters. When he returns to the station this time, it will look like this. A station grown in size and capability with roughly three times the habitable volume. Crews are living and working there in space and waiting for delivery of a new starboard side wing of solar arrays. Helping make the delivery is pilot Lee Archambault and mission specialists Steve Swanson and Danny Olivas, all making their first flights into space. Joining them are mission specialists Pat Forrester and Jim Riley both veterans of past station assembly missions. I realize the best part about flying in space are the people that you fly with. Um, and that, for me, is very true. So one of the things you do is you come together as a group of individuals, all with your own personalities and interests and backgrounds and experiences, all the things that make you who you are. And then you work together very closely. And when you're ready to fly, by the time you launch, you've become something more than just these groups of individuals. You've become a very tightly focused team and you know these people almost as well as you know your family. The space station's truss serves as a structural backbone and is made of many segments, port side, and starboard side. One mission and one giant piece at a time, NASA has been building on this backbone. The starboard truss segment being delivered for this mission includes solar arrays that will be deployed and activated, adding over 60 kilowatts of power to the station. Four crew members will make spacewalks to install and unlock the component so it can track the sun. NASA has a name for when humans leave the spaceship and perform a spacewalk. It's called an extravehicular activity, or EVA. Before the astronauts ever leave the airlock for an EVA, years of planning and practice have taken place on the ground. At the center of this preparation are the EVA trainers. I'm Keith Johnson. I'm the STS-117 EVA lead. I'm Zeb Scoville, STS-117 EVA task lead. The EVA trainers teach astronauts how to use a variety of tools and tethers designed specifically for the absence of gravity. It's their job to pay close attention to recent missions, especially when unexpected problems are encountered. During the recent STS-116 mission, a solar array wing was to be retracted, making room for the new solar arrays below it to rotate and track the sun. It was a critical part of the mission, but something went wrong. The giant wing did not fold like a map as it was designed to do. Good morning. Copy that. It took human hands to help the solar array fold correctly. Suddenly, the EVA team for STS-117 was faced with a new major challenge. The, the last minute, you know, two months before flight, 
we watched STS-116 and the EVAs uh, drastically changed because we are retracting a solar array much like they did on STS-116 and with all the problems that they had we had to modify our plan to do the best job to get the solar arrays retracted during our mission. Among the new procedures, insulating metallic tools and spacesuit gloves with tape, a safety measure to avoid conducting electricity off of the solar panels. The EVA team also practiced clearing the solar panels grommets over tiny guide wires using a variety of tools and methods. Should the solar arrays encounter problems, all of these new EVA procedures will help them fold correctly. But for those problems that can't be predicted, the most important tool might be the human mind. Uh, one of the great things about having humans outside that can do this task is that it allows us to put hands on in the work site and deal with the individual problems that come up as they arise. The new solar arrays on this mission allow for expansion of the International Space Station with our international partners, including the addition of the Japanese laboratory known as Kibo and the European Space Agency's Columbus Laboratory. Hailed as the greatest engineering achievement in space ever attempted, the completed station is not an end, but a beginning, as humankind sets its sights on exploring further and further. Well, I definitely am in line with the way we're going. I'd like to see us go back to the moon, set up a lunar base, and get used to actually living in different areas. Like, this station's a good start. Uh, people have to realize that we don't really have the technology or knowledge to go straight to the Mars. Uh, we have to uh, learn how to do that uh, kind of stuff and get the technology that we need. And the station is first teaching us how to live in space over a long period of time. Uh, it's a great uh, stepping stone. It's man's need and goal to explore. Behind every journey into space are people who are dedicated to mission safety and success. It is their combined efforts and their passion for their work that allows the space shuttle, the space station, and the vision for future exploration to take flight. You know, I've, I've been fortunate in the past in that I've had an opportunity to visit a lot of our manufacturing facilities throughout, our, throughout the country. And one of the messages I, I, I take to them is that you know, they can rest assured that even though the rest of the world might see seven astronauts lifting off or six astronauts lifting off on the space shuttle, I guarantee them that the hearts and the souls of hundreds of thousands of workers across our country are on that space shuttle. When you talk to the engineers and you talk to the scientists and you talk to the people who work here at NASA, you recognize you're, you're talking to people who are on a journey. The people, hardware, and planning are all coming together. When Atlantis takes off with the crew of STS-117, it will be another exciting step in an ongoing journey of exploration.